We start. So, uh, good evening, everyone. This is the EAT Space. Uh, we do this every Thursday night, and it's just ordinary people coming together, having conversations about social and economic topics shaping the future of East Africa and Africa. And we believe these conversations are important because you know they bring us to they bring us to speed with what's happening around us and. Uh, through these conversations, we connect, but also challenge ourselves to do and be better. Uh, this evening, we speak to uh, Natasha from from WAPI, CEO WAPI, and we shall be talking employment, gigs, and accessing opportunities. And this is something very instrumental to our economic, you know, economic growth, and at a personal level, but also at uh, a bigger scale. You know, gigs are the thing now, and how many people know about gigs, how many people are struggling with employment, but don't know that gigs can be an alternative. So Natasha will be talking about talking to us about gigs and more, but also just a bit of her, who she is and you know how she has been able to build WAPI with her team and what the journey has been like so far. I'm Frederick Cascazzini. I'm passionate about East Africa and Africa and I'm an entrepreneur. And my co-host Irene can also introduce herself. And then I will introduce Natasha again. Thank you. Um, my name is Iron. I'm also an entrepreneur. Yeah, we do this every week. We come up with um, topics. Uh, the main purpose is to, you know, shape the future of East Africa, but also to help people learn new things, new ideas from different people that we get to speak every week. Karibu sana, Natasha. We cannot wait to hear from you. And everyone, Karibuni Sana, this is a free space. You can ask any question using Swahili or English, any language that you feel very comfortable to, to use. Karibuni Sana, yeah, I'll get back to Kaskazini to introduce Natasha so that we can start this space. Sure, thank you, Irene. Uh, so, Natasha, I don't know if you can hear me. We can start. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Sure. Uh, so... Uh, you're welcome to the space. Uh, I'm going to call you to introduce yourself. Just uh, to tell us who Natasha is and how you uh, how how you got interested in doing what you're doing at WAPI and what the journey has been like so far. For those that do not know you, just walk us through who you are and how you got to be where you are right now. Karibu. Thank you, Frederick. Um, thank you, Irene. Um, I've been a little bit under the weather this week, so you'll have to excuse me if my voice is a bit not so clear or if I have to excuse myself for a second or two every now and then. Um, my name is Natasha. Um, I am a Ugandan. Um, I'm passionate about technology. Um, I'm an entrepreneur. I reside in Kampala and currently running WAPI with Collins and a team of other young and passionate, skilled people that are helping us build Africa's um, digital talent marketplace to revolutionize the way hiring is done. So um, WAPI is a digital talent marketplace. And what we do at WAPI is basically help employers and business owners find access to African tech and creative talent within less than seven days. So we're basically doing hiring and placement, but specifically in the digital space. So we grow a talent pool of uh, technology and creative people. So that is to say software engineers, designers, graphics, um, UI, UX, digital marketers, um, technical writers. And then we vet them, profile them, and then source for opportunities that match their skill set in and outside Africa, and then match them to these opportunities. Um, WAPI has been operating for about two years now. God willing, in June this year, we shall be making three years. Um, and it was started with a, a mission of helping young people that do not are not em employed. So in Africa, we have very many people that are leaving universities every year. And um, they're trying to get into uh, the so-called white-collar jobs. Uh, but these jobs are scarce, right? The, the rates of unemployment in Uganda and in Africa as a whole are, are unbelievable, right? And the people that are already in these jobs are, are not getting out of these jobs, right? 
so there had to be because the the formal employment sector is already super saturated there had to be another way through which people find access to earning opportunities and are able to earn a meaningful livelihood so we started wapi to be that channel that helps people to find another way that they can earn a meaningful livelihood through gigs so we started out as completely a gig uh, placement company where would uh, people that have uh, skills digital skills within technology and the creative industry can be matched to that work and then as we went on we realized also companies and employers were really finding it hard to um employ these people for example someone is looking for a software engineer but they maybe do not have the expertise to vet the right person for the role or they simply do not have access to a circle where they can get them right or even when they get them these people are not as good as they should be because the person who is vetting them does not necessarily have the expertise to vet them and that is how we ended up venturing into the full time roles so now we are fully fledged um into hiring uh for both the freelance economy and also the full time opportunities um we sorry excuse me Wapi was sorry Wapi was founded in Uganda and uh, we're mostly Ugandan based right now although we've managed to place um some talent in in uh, companies outside Africa so we have most of our talent right now comes from Uganda we have some talent in Nigeria and in Kenya but the goal is to be able to grow our talent pool across Africa and then match them to even more opportunities outside Africa So that's a brief about Wapi. Um I'm really happy to be here and uh, looking forward to interacting with all of you. Yeah sure. I thank you for that uh wonderful introduction Natasha and you know bringing us to speed with what Wapi is and you know what you guys are doing. But just a bit uh, before we get more into Wapi, you know, great just a bit of you who you are and you know your personal life. You know you are a young CEO and you know you are a lady. We don't see so many ladies in the tech space and doing the things you do. Um how did you get to you know uh, getting interested in building a company like Wapi? and um have you always been passionate about uh, technology and software mm mm-hmm. that's an interesting question um let's see looking back in retrospect when i was in high school i was really more uh as a scientist so to speak um i liked math so much but i wasn't like i really take it person although i always had it at the back of my mind that you know um in, uh, computer science it would be a good thing to do but i was mostly into mathematics because i remember i did physics economics and math when i was in high school so when i um when i got done with high school i went to makere and i think i did statistics for about 2 weeks <laughs> until cavendish university called me um and they gave me a merit scholarship um to do computer science the reason as to why i did computer science is because there's no statistics at cavendish and like my second best option was computer science so i started doing it it was quite interesting and as uh, and as very as happy with what i was doing i, rem- I also remember as the only girl in my class uh, cuz usually like you said girls are not usually so open to these kinds of things So it was quite interesting uh learning all those things and getting into the tech space right but I wasn't like the geeky coder so to speak so um I had been with Collins about 10 years since high school so um and we also used to work together like even outside school so he reached so we because we were working in the same place sorry <coughs> sorry i don't feel so well but yeah you have to excuse me because we were working in the same same place um very many of the of our friends that we had gone to school with kept on reaching out um to ask that maybe they could join us where we were working or somehow help them find employment so that they could also do something with themselves during the vacation because that time right before we went in, uh, at campus we were working in our vacation so 
um, they would reach out. And then Collins mentioned something about um, why wouldn't why don't we start up uh, you know a platform where these people can actually showcase their skills? Because look, we also don't not, do not have academic qualifications, but we've managed to thrive in this place that we are working at, right? So maybe these guys also have skills that they could actually use to add value to it. May not be this business, but other businesses. So. What do you think about that? Then we kept on talking about it, building it up, but we never really brought it to fruition because at that time there were so many things going on, including work and school. So during the um, during the lockdown in 2020, that is when we had a lot of time on our hands. So we started now to like actively speak about it and like um, like draw roadmaps of what it would require or what it would entail. And since I was already in that space and I was already passionate about, you know, building and technology, I was like really interested about being, you know, uh, being part of such a huge thing, right? Uh, being among, I would say, the privileged young people that were able to get employment at a young age, how about I then also be part of a movement to help others that haven't really gotten the chance like I got? So that is when we started um, drawing it up, registered it as a fully fledged company, um, sat down. We had our first launch, I think, in 2021 in June, our very, very first launch. And then we also had our first customer around that time. We made a bunch of mistakes, went back to the drawing board. Had We had like three launches, I think, until we had the final one. So, yeah, that's that. That's my journey of how I started. Um, at first, it was like really an on and off thing that we used to do as a side thing. And then sometime I decided, uh, we talked about it, and I decided to quit the job I was doing. I, I was working in gaming, and then I decided to go full-time on WAPI. And then that is when we were able to come up with structures and have it as a fully-fledged company, and we've been able to bring on these sales. And right now we have matched more than 1,200 young people to jobs or work within the digital space. And we have more than, fat, uh, more than 40 active employers at the moment. So that's the journey. And I'm honestly proud of how far we've come. Well, that's, that's incredible, Natasha. And uh, well done to you, Collins, and, and the team at WAPI. Now, getting into WAPI and employment and gigs, uh, for someone that, you know, has been saying the word gigs but doesn't really understand what it is, how do you differentiate a gig from uh, from a job? Because most young people look for jobs. They are putting up their CVs and everything, and they're trying to position themselves for a job. Um, make them understand what a gig is and why someone would opt for uh, looking out for a gig instead of looking out for a job, as we traditionally do. Yeah. Um, so a job, a job is a full-time commitment to an employer um, or, or a role in a company or a business. And that full-time commitment comes with uh, you being part of a monthly payroll where every month you're expected, you know, you're paid a certain amount of remuneration for the work that you're doing. Um, you have certain routines as a person who is part of that company. You have certain benefits like health insurance and things like that because it's a full-time commitment to that particular position in which you are. Whereas a gig is a partial commitment to a role or an employer whereby it could be a project-based gig, it could be based on a period, for example, if the project is going to run for three months, or it could even be a, a one-day task, for example, if I need someone maybe to design for me a landing page and it's probably going to take two days, that could be a gig. So, um, of course, gigs, usually payments for gigs are done based on the project, based on the period of the project, or based on the agreed time um, between the gig worker and the employer. Sorry, excuse me. Or based on the gig worker and the employer. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, all of them come down to executing a task in a given period of time. The only difference is that one has a partial commitment while the other has a full-time commitment. Um, like I had shared earlier at WAPI, WAPI, the marketplace was mostly designed to match 
um, freelancers to give work. However, over time, we also started to do full-time roles, especially for developers, designers, and digital marketers. Um, good. Okay, yeah, good. Thank you. I think, Irene, uh, you have a question. Okay. You can shoot. Yeah. So, Natasha, if I sign up with WAPI, do I have to pay to stay connected and access the gigs? And what requirements do I need to sign up for a gig? So, at WAPI, at the moment, we do not charge um, talent or freelancers um, to sign up for, on our platform. Um uh freelancers can sign up free of charge you just have to go to the platform open up an account as a provider and then we require you to upload your portfolio or your profile because at wapi we do hiring and placements entirely based on one skill set or what they are able to do or what they have done before uh, one of the reasons as to why wapi was started is to remove biases in hiring and placements um, biases based on gender, religion, country, or whatever natural and unnatural biases that come along with the hiring and uh, with the hiring and, and placement process. So we ask we ask the uh, the talent to put up a portfolio. Of course, their personal biography because we have to first verify them since the marketplace also involves um, making disbursing out payments and you know uh, KYC issues like that so we first verify you once you've been verified then we've asked you to fill in your profile so you'll be asked um, maybe if you have samples of work that you've done before you can upload them um, what is your skill set or what are the things that you do you upload them how long you take to do a project for example you put that up so basically put up an entire profile from which an employer can read up on what you're able to do in case they would like to hire you. We don't charge them uh, freelancers. We they can sign up entirely free of charge. Um, the payment issues comes in at the point of hiring, and even then, we charge the employers for hiring our talent. We do not charge the talent. Um, uh, I think we have Mugabe. I think he has a question or something to add. You can speak before Irene continues. If you can hear me, please uh, ask your question. Uh, uh, can you hear me, Frederick? I can hear uh, you. Can I be... Right. Um, mine is a comment, and perhaps it will end with a question. Um, now, I need to understand, because uh, you, you'll bear with me, I need to sort of understand this in the context of employment. Uh, because um, uh, in one in one way, when I listened, as I have listened through and as I have listened along, it sounded as if it's uh, you know that WAPI is actually like an association of workers, like in the jig space. Uh, but on the other hand, it sounded like as if it's uh, you know I'm, I'm I'm just trying to understand the context. Uh, is it going to be because again, my worry is on the other hand because if. Uh, uh, the, 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 there is an employer on one end, and there is an employee on the other uh, on, any, on the other side. Then it's much easier to fight for employer employees' rights. But then it looks as if it's not going to be that sort of relationship. It's uh, you know freelance. You come, you do your bit as and when you are needed. So I, I wanted to understand how would uh, like some sort of additional rights be given like recognition, like, I mean, if someone does a jig, uh, will, they, will they still have like conventional rights, like the right maybe to live? On a, you've taken up a jig and for some reason you're pregnant. Uh, you want to give birth or you, that or could someone who wants to take a jig and they are like expectant, could, could that put them off? Uh, you've already mentioned that you, you know, it, it, the whole process is kind of on, online in a way to avoid natural biases. But well, how do we accommodate such leverages or accommodate such challenges? Someone's probably, you know, has, consi has signed up and they probably want to take it up, but then they get a challenge or they are not well, or they need like a sick leave, which normally an employer would give you like, okay, I've given you a sick leave when you are, when you are okay, get back to work. 
how would these things be accommodated in the way this sort of alternative employment will work? Thanks. All right. Thanks, Ivan. Uh, that's a good question. So I'm going to take you through the whole process, uh, how WAPI, how the marketplace works. Um, first of all, WAPI is not an employer association. WAPI is a community of talent that has technical and creative skills, and they are looking for opportunities. While on the other hand, employers that are looking for technical and creative skills can hire these talents with ease and also affordably in one click on the on the platform so what happens is that i am a freelancer i am a graphics designer let's say i'm going to open up my profile or my account as a provider on the marketplace right so the marketplace allows me to show my availability so an employer will come and see that natasha is a graphics designer this is the kind of work that she has done and she's available at this time so she can take on work so when the employer um, chooses to hire me, they will be prompted to make a payment. The reason we do that is because we want to hold the money in trust for the freelancer so that once the work is done, they can get paid. But we also do not want employers to pay for unsatisfactory work or work that has not been done. So when they click on hire, they're going to be prompted to make a payment. So when they make the payment, the money is going to be held in trust and then Natasha will start on the work. So once I start on the work, I am also allowed to chat with this employer via our chat box, right? Now, because we are avoiding uh, people working behind us, the chat, bot will not, the chat bot will not allow you to send sensitive information like contact information and all that. However, I can negotiate with the employer. I can send them the pieces of work I have done. Now, that employer is supposed to mark the task as done before me, the freelancer, can get paid. And they can only mark that work as done if the work is satisfactory. So supposing I've been doing the work and suddenly I have fallen pregnant, so maybe I've not done, you know, uh, satisfactory work, the employer is not going to mark the work as done. So if they don't mark the work as done, they can either send in a complaint and uh, like my work hasn't been done i probably need a change of freelancer or i need this person to do better work then me as a freelancer i can either choose to do better work and send it to them and then i'll get paid or i can then inform them that hey i'm now unavailable because of this and this and then we shall give them a replacement and the other person will be paid so everything is flexible and the nature of the marketplace being a freelance marketplace Everything is really flexible. I can choose to put off my availability if I think I am not available to take on more work. Or if I'm available to take on my work, more work, I can switch on my availability so that employers can see before they actually choose to go ahead with me. Then the issue of, uh, for example, if I've done like work before, how are the employers going to know like, you know, uh, this person has worked with the employers here so they can be trusted? There is a verification feature on the platform as well. So if I do good work and the person is happy, I'm, I am also paid my money, the employer can go ahead and put, for example, three or four or five stars for me to show that I did good work for them so that the next employer that's going to come can see that, hey, this is the work that Natasha has done. They also have a good comment from so-and-so as an employer and they also have five stars meaning they are going to do a good job for me. So everything is pretty much flexible and the platform is really pretty much self-service, right? So an employer can read, they can assign work. If you have a particular freelancer that you've been working with on the platform and they've been doing well with you, you can still come back and hire the same person and even rate them. So everything, and that is why it's called a marketplace because people that have skills can use their skills to add value to other businesses, well, businesses, that are looking for those skills can then come and hire those uh, skills from the platform. So yeah, that's how it works and I hope I've answered your question. Thank you, Natasha. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, 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 thank you. So I don't know if Ivan, Ivan, I hope your question has been answered. If it, you need to have some more questions, probably you will request to speak again. So Natasha, um, 
let's say I'm a, I'm a startup, I'm a startup founder, I have a small startup and, you know, you, I'm sure, very well know how it is like to start up a small company or have a startup here in, uh, here in East Africa. And I need some, some talent, I need some skills. How much can it, like, how much does it cost for uh, roughly, not the exact figure, but roughly how much does it cost for an employer to access talent via WAPI? Do you guys have a particular uh, range of price that is charged for all the talent at WAPI? Or um, is it something that we negotiate about me and the particular freelancer I'm trying to get to work for me? Um, so at WAPI, we really try to promote um, people's work and have them have value for their work, right? So basically, every freelancer or even those that are open to full-time roles at WAPI, they have their, you know, they have portfolios of work they've been doing before because we have senior people, we have mid-level people, and we have junior people. And of course, those different categories have different prices they go for, right? So usually when it's a freelance, when it's freelance work, um, we charge the employers 20% of the service fee for the service that they need, whether it's um, engineering, whether it's design. And then for the full-time roles, we charge them a one-off, uh, one-off hiring and placement fee, which also really depends on if the person we are placing is a senior person or mid-level or junior. So in most cases, it honestly depends on the service that you need, but also the kind of talent that's going to do that for you. But like I said, WAPI was started to help uh, businesses find talent affordably. So there's always something for everyone. Thank you. Um, as we talk about WAPI, you'll allow me uh, just get a get get back also on the side of uh building a company and your your journey why because uh as much as uh, we're talking about um, uh, people looking for gigs or people looking for em uh, employment we also have uh we also have founders and guys building startups on and they would want to want, learn one or two things so from what you said earlier on in you know your 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 story and your background you talk about starting wapi and you still had school in the equation how has it how have you managed to how are you able to juggle school and building a company at the same time and even now a bit forward if you're having more than one gig how do you manage that as a young person and as a young CEO? Yeah, um, being in the freelance space, uh, one thing that's important for every freelancer out there is um, the ability to program yourself and uh, um, underline your tasks, uh, what you're supposed to do alongside with that time, right? So when you want something, you'll do it. That's for sure. That's a law of life. Like if you want something, you're going to do it. If there are excuses as to why you're not doing it, then that means you probably don't want it as much, right? So if you know that you are maybe doing uh, two gigs or even three at the same time, because right now uh, in the remote work era, you can even do three jobs at the same time, right? So if you know that uh, this is what you're supposed to do, um, it's important to know how to prioritize. Know that this one is more important the other than the other, so I'm probably going to wake up at 7 a.m. and put aside four hours to finish that before I can then get on to another thing. And that is something that we always tell our talent in the WAPI community and anyone that is really venturing into the freelance space. So when, when I was in school, I knew that first of all i wasn't doing wapi alone um there's 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 people that are working with us right so letting letting me down also meant letting other people down but also all the other people that are looking at wapi as a channel to get meaningful earning opportunities so i knew for sure that i wanted to do this and i knew for sure that wapi is important to not only me but also a bunch of other people right so I needed to make time for it. So I would plan. I would know that, um, for example, if I had class at this time, um, the other time we shall be maybe meeting with a team to strategize about something 
or the other time we shall be you know uh discussing how to start a new feature or whatever it was so it's just really about planning prioritizing making time sometimes it involves working uh staying up late hours in the night or waking up very very early at ungodly hours but you always make time if you want something so it's just about uh, planning prioritizing and programming yourself to do what you know is important to you and what you want thank you natasha uh, mark, mark, mark think has a question or a comment and he will be coming in but just before he comes in i just wanted to ask um as a person as in a digital marketplace what particular skills you know could be two or three or what are those particular skills you would advise a young person who's who wants to become a freelancer or who is already a freelancer what are those skills that you see that are vital that enable someone to succeed in the gig economy what are the skills they should equip themselves with or look out to equipping themselves with um i think the first one for me would be design um design and that that could be graphics that could be video editing that could be uh UI UX right so right now um ever since after the pandemic um there's a no, lot of what's, digital what's marketing what's UI UX if you um, can explain use, that as well <laughs> user user experience uh user interface uh like the outlook of a website and then the experience of a website when you know when a user so designing that user experience is is user ui and ux right i i hope i've explained it properly so um yeah i was saying after the pandemic um there was a lot of digital marketing because everything you know went online right companies started working online a uh, traditional marketing kind of first doubt and so many people were using um yes, search engine optimization social media um google my business and all that right so what does that mean that 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 means more content creation and more content creation also means more media more design more graphics more videos you know um so that you're able to attract your audience right so that that means that each and every company that is there for as long as they're doing digital marketing and marketing is important for any company that means that they need a designer right so that means that people who are in the design space are then going to be on high demand now because they are on high demand the ones that are really good are the ones that are going to be fought for in most companies and even when you look at the employers that hire through wapi the top top uh roles they're looking for are software developers and then the second is design so for me my first would be design why i chose design over developing is because designing is way easier and also with all the tools that are available you can start out as a designer easily you can start with canva um canva is a graphics design tool that can give you templates you start out with that then slowly by slowly you make additions you start adding text you start adding a few features images and then you probably go to photoshop and start editing and then go to illustrator and all those tools but also there are very many free online tools that can help you to learn graphics design in even a week or two right that's one then two um the technical aspect which is engineering right um but also sometimes when you talk about tech very many people think it's only about coding and all that right but you can be a project manager in technology you can be there's so many things like you just need to leverage the power of the internet like right now if you went and and uh, and 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 browsed like how many careers are there in technology there are thousands of things that you can find um there there is uh there is a skill called virtual assistant we're not hiring for virtual assistant uh through wapi at the moment but very many other remote hiring tools that are available they need virtual assistant that's a skill that i think someone should have um digital marketing there is a free uh, online fully fledged course about digital marketing right um it's called uh, what's it called <laughs> sorry 
uh, Google Digital Marketers something something I'll probably share uh, the tool with the uh, Kaskazini after here and then you can share it with the community right where you can learn about the fundamentals of digital marketing search engine optimization how to create valuable content for your audience your target market and all those things digital marketers are needed the same explanation I gave for designers all companies are marketing on digital platforms so people that can be able to leverage social media and, and, and search engine optimization and create valuable content for their, for their companies or businesses on a high rise. So those are like four to five skills that I think people should have um, in this generation if, you're, if, you're, if you want to find work like very easily, but also work at the work in a very flexible environment because all those skills I've mentioned, you can work remotely and you can even work for companies outside Africa for as long as you're good and you know the value that you bring to the table. Thank you, Natasha. If you've just joined the space, we're talking to uh, Natasha, the CEO of WAPI. WAPI is a digital marketplace. We're talking gigs and employment. I think I can invite Mark to ask his question or give his comment. Uh, Mark, if you can hear me, uh, shoot. Uh, I think, Natasha, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I see Mark is muted. I don't know if he, if he knows. Yeah, Maybe he's I'm, also, uh, I'm also wondering. Um, as I think Mark tries to work on his speaker, uh, to speak, guys, if you can, if you have a question to ask Natasha, you can request to speak and I will allow you to ask a question. If you have a comment to make, uh, I think Ivan wanted to add something. Ivan, if you can hear me, uh, say what you want to say, then we can proceed. Uh, hi, Frederick, you can hear me. I uh, thank you, Natasha, yeah. for your response. Uh, there are two things which I just kind of, uh, from the explanation, which I sort of understand how WAPI works in a way. Uh, there is a, a platform called Airbnb. This one primarily deals with houses, people having houses, and they make them available on that online platform. And someone who is probably a tourist coming to maybe East Africa or Uganda to Kenya for the first time, they have nowhere to stay. They use that platform. They go on, on the online site. They pick, they search, they see the cost for the house per night they are going to stay. And then they pick the, 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 that particular house and the money is paid up front and then it probably goes to, to the house owner. I think there is a way it's sort of done. So the, 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 the owners of the site of Airbnb, I think it's based in the, probably based in the U.S., uh, the headquarters are in the U.S., but it's globally used. The platform is globally used by for uh, you know for different by different house owners ac across the globe. Even people in Kampala use it in Nairobi, among other places. So it's more like an intermediary sort of thing, where the house owners who have rooms for rent avail their space online, and then people can search and see them, and then they are able to pay them through that sort of tool. So I, I kind of figure out that this time around it's talent while the other platform is for houses, uh, especially not for, for renting, but for a night, staying for a night. Tourists use it very often. And also another one, it's another one, it's a little similar to Booking.com, Airbnb, similar to Booking.com. Um, I think also uh, a comment I may also, also make there is that uh, what has also been quite interesting or uh, uh, somehow controversial with Airbnb and actually that uh, booking.com is that sometimes they, 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 they are very good at avoiding taxes. <laughs> it's, easier, it's easier to avoid taxes because they are global. So you may find some of the customers are probably based or subscribe to the site, but they are based in maybe in Uganda. Others are based maybe in Nigeria. Others, and they are all present you know, like like literally putting their houses on the plat on the online platform and people choose those houses. So it's uh, they have issues of tax because uh, the, the platform is not responsible for paying taxes. And for example, like in Uganda, they don't even have like uh, a, an office, a physical office or address here, but uh, they're able to do business. So it's, it's, I think in a way I see that probably one of them, the, 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 the aspects of, uh, you know, being able to flexibly work. And I think also the other aspect is the cross-border element because online businesses 
if people can be able to pick people with talent, they can search for someone based in, in their cross border. Basically, that's the point. Um, uh, whereby a person looking for talent may be based in Kenya, so you may check on that site, and they will still be able to identify the person with the talent. So, uh, I uh, I'm thinking maybe it's not uh, the, the, the the platform is not limited in geographical scope because internet is quite uh, global, but also quite uh, cross jurisdiction it can cut across more than one country for people to get the services yeah and i think maybe lastly again uh, is probably the other the, the which maybe i would also like maybe get a bit of a comment on that is how to deal with online fraud which is <laughs> any online businesses can often struggle with that in a way but they come up with some kind of due diligence checks and measures to make sure that people don't take advantage of the site I uh, problem I can say maybe it's not a common challenge, especially in 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 our context. Like maybe when you look at uh, countries in East Africa or countries in Africa, it's not a big problem. But I think it's more of a big challenge to countries like maybe in the UK, in the US, because there are problems of what they call cyber scouting, uh, where uh, which where people probably can use the, those techniques of machine learning and metadata disclosure, and then they can forge a website, which really looks like the, the domain name is pretty much similar to that of WAPI. Uh, and yet, in actual sense, it's not actually the correct website of WAPI. So uh, I don't think we've had, there have been cases of cyber scouting maybe in, in East Africa and probably in Africa, but there have been rather common cases in Europe. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you, Ivan. Uh, I think Irene... Uh... You have a question, uh, but thank you, Ivan. Uh, I think you, you make quite interesting uh, comments, uh, especially about the topic that we're talking about. I don't know if Mark can hear me now, but if you can hear me, Mark, I think you'll ask your question after Irene. Oh, yes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, sorry, Irene. Okay, it's okay. You should. Uh, sorry, sorry. Um, thank you very much, Natasha, for the wonderful presentation. I think I have seen Wapi grow. Um, I just wanted to inquire uh, about, you talked about the digital space and the creative space. My interest is more into the creative space because that is where I'm best. Um, how are you able to cite different opportunities for the different creatives and what scope of the creative space do you cover? Uh, given that the creative space is one large one i would like to know what scope that you what scope you cover within the creative space and how uh how often do the opportunities for these different creatives uh come about all right thanks mark uh i'll start with what creative space we cover um we cover design um digital marketing and uh technical or creative writers. So that's the space that we cover. And like I shared earlier, um, especially for design and digital marketing, they are in the second and third positions with, uh, regarding the most highly demanded four roles uh, by employers respectively. So that's how much we cover, but also they are quite in, on high demand due to the fact that all companies need to, you know, build brand awareness on the digital spaces, uh, but also design the kind of content or curate the content that they put out for their audiences. Thank you so much, Natasha. My question is, um, how far have you been able to extend the gig company to other countries, but also... Um, do these people who get to have the short-term employment uh, get to work with other countries or is just in Uganda? Um, how far have we been able to cover the employment in other countries in regards to the number of talent placed there or the talent scope in Africa? Sorry, I didn't get that well. Like how far <coughs> have we been able to extent like someone like me in Tanzania, how can I access the gig, the gig company? How can how can I how can it work on my country? Can it work on my country? Oh. Can I come yeah that's oh yes. Yeah sure. Um so like I said the mandate of WAPI is to be able to place African tech and creative talent in 
uh, meaningful employment, right? So that means that our talent scope is supposed to cover the whole of Africa. Unfortunately, right now, most of our talent, like I shared at the beginning, only comes from Uganda, Kenya, and Nigeria. But we are working to be able to extend, uh, to be able to acquire talent from other countries of Africa, like Tanzania, Rwanda, Nairobi, and sorry, um, uh, and the rest, right? Um, but in regards to earning, earning opportunities, um, right now we have three active companies that we are hiring for in Europe and in US, and we've matched about 10 developers and a designer in those companies, right? And that is the goal because definitely the employers outside have, you know, bigger purchasing power, but also the employment opportunities are more meaningful. So that's the goal. Um, and by 2025, we should have extended to at least four more countries in Africa in regards to our talent scope. And then we should have been able to place more opportunities beyond Africa in regards to the, to the opportunities. But yes, uh, the platform can work in your country as well. Where you are, you can be able to sign up as a freelancer or if you're an employer, you can also be able to hire through us. Yeah, but do I get to work in my country or I can just work with other countries? Yeah, absolutely. Because most of the roles that we place for are remote roles. Um, and that is why we actually decided to focus on on the tech and creative um, industry, because that way people can be able to use their skills to add value to businesses without necessarily being affected by their geographical location. So absolutely, you can be able to work remotely. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Natasha. Uh, guys, we have about 15 minutes to the end of the space. Uh, if you've just joined us, we're talking gigs, employment. We're speaking to COOP, uh, Natasha, who is sharing a lot of knowledge and how things work in the gig economy. I think we have someone here who wants to ask a question. Uh, let me approve Jordan to speak. Uh, and... As I think, Jordan, if you can hear me, ask your question before we proceed. Uh, I think he's having an issue connecting. But yeah, um, so, yeah, yeah, Jordan, please shoot. Uh, Jordan, if you can hear me, ask your question. Turn on your microphone, Jordan. Oh, hello, Frederick. Thank you. Um, hi, Natasha. Uh, I had wanted to ask, oh, like, like, first of all, I want to commend you about, about building a successful startup. That is something that is really huge, given the fact that I've tried to build a number of them, and most times they end at product development stage, and they never really, they never really become a business entity in itself that generates profits. So, like, I would, uh, first thing is, like, I would want your tips on, uh, on how to make that leap, like how you got Wope from that leap from the product development stage to turning it into a business, which after some time, I don't know, I, I believe you gave an amazing profit. Okay, so how do, how, do, how do you go from that leap from, from product development to, to instituting a business that is profitable? Then also, I would like you to give me some tips about how to create a great team. When do you know that your team is functional and it will deliver on your vision because like most times okay like i've tried to build a number of products basing on like problems that i face and and my engagements and what i do so like most times it's always like for us techies it's always it's always very exciting to build a product but then most times like turning that product into a business becomes the problem because like most sometimes it feels that when we are creating a team, you realize, that, oh, actually the team we created was, I don't know, like motivated by need or something. We could like, you, you're like getting the first person you can get because they are really one. Most times they usually don't work out. So I would like you to give me tips about how to create a great team. Then also I wanted to ask whether does WAPE do the matching between, between the talent and employers? Or, or what happens is that the employers, when they come to WAPE, they can view the entire candidate pool available at WAPI, and then the employers pick pick a talent. Because otherwise, I was thinking of a scenario whereby if I have a portfolio, right, my, 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 my portfolio 
is not very impressive. Like I've worked on maybe one or two projects and they're like not top notch. So that means like if employers, if if the employers who are picking a candidate from the candidate pool, that means that the employers are going to like overlook my my profile a lot of times because like my my profile is not is not very impressive. So I was thinking like does WAPE also provide trainings for the for for the talents that they have on the platform such that they can level up and improve or training or mentorship such that the talent can keep growing. It can keep growing such that they, the employers can be able to pick them up like more frequently. Also, I uh, there have been a number of uh, AI tools that have been trending on the internet and I'm very sure like most of us here are familiar with chat GPT or have used it in one way or the other. Also, I would like to uh, ask you, uh, what do you think is the feature of, for us, especially as the techies, and how do you think we we can stay relevant, like with the advent of such tools, like oh we have we have no there are a number of them we have Mid Journey that can do like designs and all that, ChatGPT that's it's literally information can write code and all that. How do you think like as freelancers can leverage all these tools to become to become better and more efficient? Thank you, and to also also to stay relevant. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Jordan. You've asked me like 15 questions. I hope I'll remember them, but yeah, let me try. Um, so I think the first thing was about how do you build a product and then turn it, to, uh, turn it into a successful business. Uh, for me, I would think that the first thing really shouldn't be about building the product. It's not the first thing you shouldn't do because ideally the product is just a supporting factor for the business. Your business should not revolve around the product. It should revolve around um, how you serve or the value that you give to your clients. So the first thing should be for you to identify the problem. And if it's an actual valid problem for the people that you hope to serve, and then build a product based on how you're going to solve the problem for them. Because if then you're solving a valid problem for them and giving them a solution, then selling or making it become a business will not be hard, right? Because then you would be selling to them a solution, so they will all be looking forward to buying it um, and consuming it. So the first thing for you shouldn't be building a product. The first thing should be for you to identify the problem, the people whose problem it is, or stroke your audience, and then what solution you're going to offer them in order to solve that problem, and then you build the product, and that's how you sell to them the product and it becomes a business. That's one. Then two, you asked about um, if WAPI does training for talents. Um, Right now we are only focusing on matching because that is where our expertise is. We do not uh, do training as such, but we do collaborations with institutions that are doing training as a way to also support our talent acquisition. Institutions that do training, but specifically in the technical space, um, like institutions that train people how to program, how to become developers. So we partner with them to feed into our talent, but also to help them with the aspect of what happens after these people have gotten the skills they are looking for. That's two. The third thing was, I think, how do um, how do developers remain relevant? Um, so you just need to keep on top of your game, right? Um, in technology, there are always trends. There are new programming languages, I think, almost every quarter or every month, even sometimes. Um, there are new programs that are coming up. There are new features that are coming up, new collaboration tools. So you always have to keep up on, like, you have to keep on your A game all the time. Like, you need to do research, know what is now being used mostly, what is easier to use, because Right now, people buy convenience, right? So whatever is easier to use, learn that. The languages that, uh, the programs that people are using more, or like the developers that are on market, what languages do they use? Learn those, like just keep on top of the trends. And that's how you're going to be relevant because everything that comes, you're flexible since you know how to use it. So you're able to adjust to almost anything that comes. And that's exactly how you remain relevant. Forgive me if there's something I left out because the questions were quite many, so maybe you can remind me. Thank you, Natasha. Uh, I think just to take it, take it on from here, uh, I would like you to walk us through 
um so i've seen for example i see the the wapi advert and i see the wapi link walk us through about how i sign up to become uh, a freelancer on wapi and how i actually create my profile and do i get alerted when there are gigs or do i have to keep checking the application or the website or checking my account or my email just walk us through a walk us through a signing up process and also how i do receive notifications or gigs yeah so the first thing there are two things the first thing is the freelance the marketplace uh, launch the one for the gigs that we were talking about earlier and i pretty much shared the process you just really need to sign up as a provider we shall ask we shall first verify you and then ask you to put up your portfolio work you've done before your biography um all the skills that you have any past projects you've worked on and once your profile is fully um uploaded and updated then we shall let you know that you're now able to receive work so once an employer hires you you will receive a notification via your email and it will let you know that hey someone has requested to hire you so it will have a link where you can click and it will redirect you to the platform and then you can start engaging with this person that's for the freelance or for the gig work then two we have a careers portal and that is mostly for the full time opportunities and that one is usually going out on our twitter instagram and all our social media pages so now career portal is where we have the the roles that are available for full time if you want to be like a full time developer we are hiring for let me say a full stack developer or whatever uh we we're always putting that out on our platforms so you usually follow our careers portal link and then you apply through that link and then there directly you will go through the assessment processes um and then if you are a good fit for the role you're taken on you could decide to keep checking our careers portal if you're someone that is looking for a more full time opportunity opportunity every now and then because we usually have a bunch of them actually even today we put out one and we have about 5 to 6 open roles at the moment so if you know people that are good at any of those skills please encourage them to check them out okay thank you natasha now i think i'm now going to speak to you as a ceo as we come to the winding up stages of the space um what has been the biggest challenge for you so far you know building a company like wapi and being a leader at wapi you know in your role as ceo what has been the biggest challenge you've, you've faced so far and how have you been able to solve it or how are you being able to manage that particular challenge Mm, I think for me the biggest thing is <laughs> the biggest thing is um how can I call it I think perseverance because like being in a startup scene there are so many reasons as to why sometimes you wake up in the morning and you're like but why am I even continuing this thing but then you remember like the work that you and the team have put in before and where you have gotten and where you want to get and you're like maybe it's much harder to end than to continue right so those moments when you feel like that for me have been the hardest but i am thankful that we've managed to get through them and continue okay, thank you um my next question will then be um uh, it's it's a culture question you know we have you in the space in in all that you're doing as 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 Natasha in the you know in the tech space and I'm sure the other things that you do um what is the biggest impact actually if i talk about the 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 impact your impact let me ask two questions one is um along your journey uh build a ceo but also you know as a, as as wapi what has been the biggest advice you have learned or you've been told or you have heard of that you've taken on and it has worked wonders for you that just one piece of advice and secondly in all that you're doing as a young uh, as a young uh, young person uh, thriving in the in the in the tech space and generally in your life what's the biggest impact you'd want to be remembered for Um I'll start with the impact and then I'll go to the advice. Um I want to be remembered as someone that helped um 
as someone that played a big role in helping young African people find meaningful opportunities. Because like I shared earlier, there is the, sorry, the rates of unemployment in Africa are soaring and it's crazy. And in as much as people say that also our employability rate is really low, the truth is that there are, there are very many upskilling programs that are going on right now because yes, our employability rate was really low, but a number of players have come into the market to try and solve that. And they have created so many upskilling programs. Like almost everywhere you go, they will tell you there's an upskilling program. We are training young people to do this, to do this. And most of them are in that tech space. But then, okay, now these people are getting these skills. The people that were not employable before have all these skills. So after that, what's happening? Now the solutions for that are really, really low right but uh, a few years to come if almost like even though it's just like 70 percent of the young people have meaningful learning opportunities and they're living the lives they want to live um in a flexible way and and like i could have like even contributed just a little bit to that i think it would be a very 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 nice thing um, not young people always crying out to the government that they don't have work and, you know, fighting with old people for the, pos for the very few positions that are there. Yeah, so that's the kind of impact I want to create. Then the biggest advice I have received, um, let me see, as a CEO who is, you know, trying to build a business that works, to understand, to understand your customer, but also really know if you're creating value or not. Because at the end of the day, it's the value that people are going to buy. If the value is not there, it's not it's not going to yield much. Then as a person, um, this was advice I actually got like very recently, I think a few days ago, that in the middle of all this, when you're trying to make everything work and you're not going to bed and not sleeping, just remember to live life for a moment. Yeah. That's deep. That's quite deep. The last one, and I think even the first yeah. one, because I think most of the times we want to succeed, but we are not willing to actually create that value for people to actually pay for it or for people to actually want to access our services or product. So I think as young people, we need to really think about what value do you bring to the table, and why should I listen yeah. to you, or why should I buy your product or service? And yeah, I think we need yeah. to live this life now. Yeah, true. Because I think that's why we work. Uh, so. Uh, my next, my, my third last question, I think. Um, when you look at, from where you see it, a C or a P uh, company that's a digital marketplace, from where you see it, what do you think is the future of, because I, I know you read, it's already geeks happening, but what do you see is the future of, you know, employment or the future of tech, you know, from where you see it? 50 mm. years from now, 30 years from now, 20 years from now, how do you think things will be happening? And what would you say people should look out for or people should give a thought in regards mm. to what you think the future is going to look like? Yeah, that's very interesting because actually the fact is, and I need you guys to do your research, the fact is that 30 years from now, a quarter, more than a quarter actually, of the world's labor force is going to come from only one continent, and that continent is going to be Africa, right? So if it is going to look like that 30 years from now, that means what we should be doing right now is preparing ourselves so that when that time comes, when, when, when people are like, you know, Asian countries are now willing to hire from Africa, that we're actually ready for those opportunities. So right now we should be like getting the relevant skills right now. We should be having the best, you know, hiring platforms. Right now people should be like on top of because this whole, you know, scrambling for the few opportunities that are in here is going to end because now we're going to have employers from like another sphere altogether, right? So there's an and very many of the jobs that are going to be there right now are not here are not here at the moment, right? Because of technology, things are evolving and jobs are changing. And that is why we were even discussing what are the top skills at the moment, right? So there are, very, there are going to be very many jobs. I'll give you an example. Um, 10 years ago, there was not um, a job such as content creation, right? 
like our parents knew you either have to be an engineer or a doctor or a teacher or whatever. Uh, but right now they are content creators, right? Because of the evolution and because of internet and all that. So even 30 years from now, there are going to be so many jobs that are not here right now. So that means we're supposed to be learning, um, getting to know the trends and equipping ourselves with that skill so that when that time comes, we are the pros and we are relevant in those, you know, in those roles and we're able to take them on. Thank you, Natasha. Uh, my last question is, here on the space, we celebrate Africans moving Africa. You're one of the Africans moving Africa, by the way, because of the work you're doing with WAPI. So I want you to celebrate just one African. It could be a Ugandan, East African, any African from anywhere on the continent or from out here that you feel is doing something that's moving Africa, uh, whose work you admire or you feel that uh, people should celebrate, celebrate just one African. Huh. Let me see. Um, <laughs> um, let's see. I think for me, I would start with uh, here in Uganda. Um, the work that the two bio guys are doing is really, really amazing work. But even the work aside, for me, one thing I admire about them and that thing that I always want to have from them in WAPI is the energy that they have. Like, those guys have amazing energy and every day they will wake up and, like, they never look tired. You know, like, how the startup world is, like, really tiring. Those guys are never tired. They're always ready to push and push and push every day and, you know, like, do new things. And they've really inspired me with their energy. So, yeah, like, Ugandan-wise, those are the guys I look up to, especially for their energy. Okay, thank you, thank you, Natasha. Uh, very last question as we close. Um, it's, it's Jan 2023. What should people look out for, like in term in back to WAPI, like you know something that WAPI is working on, or something that WAPI is ready to share with us? What should people look out for this year, following up WAPI and um, what you guys are doing? Mm, nice. Uh, we're planning so many things. Um. There's something that we are building. I think I might first need permission from our city or to share that, but sure. yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's something that we are building that is specifically for the creatives. Uh, I'm sure that Mark would be very excited about that, where they would be able to get paid via that. They can share their profiles via that. Like it's more detailed and more specific to talent. Uh, more than the platform that we have at the moment. But yeah, we shall be launching it out soon and sharing more details. We might also be launching something for the interns. <laughs> like I said, I might need permission from our CTO to be sharing such things. Sure, but sure. yeah, we're working on something for the interns as well. Um, and then we shall definitely be having community events, for, especially for our talents, uh, just to help them, like guide them with their career path. Um, you know, what skills they need to know, what kind of resources they need to surround themselves with, and all that. Um, and of course, not forgetting the roles, the roles that are coming out almost every day, like we are hiring. And this time around, we are trying to get as more global opportunities as possible. So if you haven't joined the WAFI community as a talent, I, I honestly don't know what you're doing with your life. So, yeah. <laughs> interesting <laughs> interesting anyway um it's been more than an hour now natasha and uh you've shared so much knowledge and so much value out here i'm sure um whoever logged on into the space or came and came to join the conversation has surely learned something i hope jordan's questions were all answered uh, i think if we have no one else trying to ask a question or to comment then we shall surely close up the space Guys, this is a recorded space, so if you missed anything earlier on, you can listen to the recorded space. This is the EAT space. We do this every Thursday at 8 p.m. Our goal is to uh, have 50 impactful spaces, and we had Natasha for the 12th space. 
I wish I have another space next week so you surely can, you know, look out and join the conversation, yeah? These conversations are important because they challenge us to be and do better. I'm sure listening to Natasha and what she shared, you've been challenged to either be or do better or look out for opportunities, even if you already have opportunities at your hand. Uh, I thank you all for being part of the conversation. and Thank you so much, Natasha. Hopefully we shall have you again. Uh, media because you know you, for you we have to talk more and more and more because you talk opportunities and jobs and yeah we commend you and your team at WAPI the work that you're doing and the fact that you think about creating opportunities not just for yourselves but also for as many uh, people across Africa and not just Uganda we really commend you for that work and we pray that you may keep doing more and realize the biggest of the goals that you guys have in the pipeline yeah uh, those are my parting shots. I think I'll allow Irene to give her parting shots, and then Natasha, you will come back, give your parting shots, and we can call it a night. Guys, uh, if you have no question or no comment, we are about to close the space. Irene, shoot. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Natasha, for the info you have given us. But also, I'm sure so many people have, you know, the people who didn't know about gig, um, I'm sure now they know, they know the knowledge. Thank you for, for you know, being part of the EAT space. I would like to say good night to everyone and thank you very much for everyone who uh, 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 served their time to join our conversation. We have this every week, like Kaskazini said. So yeah, Karibu Nisara and good night. Yes, yeah, surely. Natasha, your parting shot. Okay. Um... Thank you, Fred, for hosting me and Irene. Uh, and I would like also to thank everyone that has tuned in to listen. Um, please spread the gospel about WAPI. Uh, tell people we have the future of work lies in our hands, eh? so they should just, yeah. But I'm so glad to have uh, gotten to interact with you and also had the comments from a few people from the audience. I've also learned quite a bunch of stuff. I'm really grateful and I look forward to interacting with you more. Have a good night. So, so thank you, Natasha. Thank you, Irene. And thank you, everyone that's still in the space. I see Michael, I see Laban, I see Alvaro, Joel, and Mark. Asante Sana, guys. And have a wonderful night. Have a wonderful week ahead. Let's keep moving Africa in whatever way we can. And let's keep trying to be and do better. Like Natasha said, the future of employment lies in their hands, but the future, the, you know, the, the responsibility of a better, the responsibility of a better Africa, better Uganda, better East Africa does lie in our hands, and we need to do and be better and move this place. Guys, good night. Asante sana. Good night.